The fans continued to rebel against the board and finally on Thursday the 3rd of March 1994 events reached crisis point. With an overdraft of £5 million in Celtic's name, the bank threatened to foreclose. When the banks came calling and said the only way forward is to sack the people who are not going along with us, so I had to do that. But I got word um, that the bank were going to be foreclosing and I know the, the bank had put pressure on the directors personally to, to sign personally for the debt, which they didn't want to do. And if they did not do that, then the, the bank was going to foreclose and, uh, and recall its call in its loan. So that was the reason I came overnight in a hurry to basically take over the bank. I took over, if you like, that debt without control of the club. I paid that bill without having control of the club. It would have been cheaper to let it go into bankruptcy. Instead, we paid all the bills and paid off the bank and paid all the other things. And it, so it became, uh, it was quite a, a revamping that took place very expensively. Even at this stage, there was resistance to a transfer of shares and control, though Celtic were hours away from bankruptcy. For some, the feeling was that there was a commitment to the traditions of the club which had to be upheld. Quite clearly, the driving force of holding on to, the, to my shares and not to succumb to these commercial pressures, which were really quite insidious, uh, was the fact that um, I had been schooled to protect the traditions of Celtic, to never consider the shares to have any commercial value at all. We never valued them, we never looked for a valuation, we didn't want the money from selling them, we never took any money out of the club in way of directors' fees or dividends on the shares. We were there as trustees of the Celtic tradition, and that wasn't for sale. Eventually, right prevails, and they had to move on. They wanted to be rewarded for the, the, the years and efforts they'd put in, so they, they were paid for their shares to, to move on. It, it took a long time to do it, and as Fergus said, he, he didn't want to pay them one thin dime, but he eventually had to, to realise that to, to move people who were shareholders out, you had to take the shares off them by financial means and, and move them on that way. Uh, Tom Grant and I were major shareholders, and we refused to take any money from Fergus. And that was a lot of money, believe you me. The fans who had gathered outside the stadium in the rain throughout the course of the day were delighted with the outcome. From there it was just euphoria. Uh, me and a few of the guys and the rest of the committee were all headed straight up to the park. And uh, from standing outside with banners for months, uh, wondering if ever, anything would ever really happen. We were really, guys were popping champagne. And I'll never forget probably, I think it was Brian Dempsey and Fergus McCann came out the doors, you know, and proclaimed to the Celtic support. The game is over. The Rebels have won. Yeah! Deep breath. Hail, hail, and welcome to the Homeboys Live Monday night phone-in show, or Skype-in show, I suppose. Um, we are back um, after another action-packed week. Well, I'll say action-packed. wasn't a lot of, a lot of action. Uh, it was a lot of football. Um, um, I am, of course, Joe McKenna. Uh, just to get the things out of the way first, you can uh, Skype in and call us. Did anybody call in last week? I, I don't think anybody called in last week. Uh, we, we, we've been getting a, a, a bit of a... A bit of a barn spell of caller. So if you, if you want to call in, if you're a new listener, or if maybe you're uh, sitting at home, you're bored, you don't agree with what we're saying, or you, you want to throw your, your tuppence worth in, feel free, go on to Skype, search Homeboys, uh, call us in, don't worry about who's talking, what's happening. Um, actually, no, that's a lie, because I'm going to reiterate different rules now in a second. Uh, but anyway, feel free to Skype in. If we add you to the call, we'll, we'll get around to talking to you. Um, you can also use the chat room to make, make yourself known. And give us abuse, whatever you want to do. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at Homeboys on Twitter uh, at Hill Hill Media on Twitter. You can email us at, at homeboysgmail.com. Um, I think that's about it, really. And okay, so I'm of course Joe McKenna, and I'm joined as usual by the one and only Green and White Raider, Mr. Paul Larkin. Hello, hello. And as usual, the uh, king of the show, Jason Higgins. <laughs> Aye, right. Uh, hello, hello, mate. <laughs> and. And today, today is Bonnet Day, so that's why we uh, played a wee bit of uh, Fergus, or a wee bit of uh, history before the show. Usually we play a bit of music. We thought it would just be, it'd be apt to play, uh, that's a word that's getting used a lot these days on this show, apt. I've been listening to a lot of shows and people are using that word. But uh, So we thought that would be handy. So, 
carrying on from last week when we decided we'd be, rather than have the usual suspects every week, we would have a guest panellist on every week. We've been joined this week by a, a very special guest. Last week we had Danny O'Connor on talking about uh, his New England uh, late welterweight championship uh, win in the Boston Garden and uh, his, his Celtic affinity, of course. This week uh, we have on a very special guest in... Uh, there's a, word, there's a word I'm looking for there, and I've completely forgotten it. In the in the, in the figure in the shape of uh, Mr. Joe Mackin from the uh, the Kano Foundation. Now, whether or not you know who the Kano, Kano Foundation is, whether you know all about it, or you know nothing about it, we're going to pass over to Joe in a second. Joe, give, give us a bit of a hello there. Hey, what are you watch. Um, How are you doing? It was a hail, hail, yeah. Um, thank you, mate. And so we're going to go over and talk to Joe about the Kano Foundation. So first thing first, Joe. I mean, say, I mean, if. People are out there and they've got no idea what the Kino Foundation is. And, and if you had to sum it up, sort of, not not briefly, but if you had to give them an overall picture of what the Kino Foundation is and what the Kino Foundation do, I mean, how would you uh, how would you explain that to them? Yeah, basically, the Kino Foundation are a group of fans that go together and they bought well, actually sixty-two season tickets at the moment, ten adults and sixty-two kids, and any kind of kids group that applies. You just go on a waiting list, you get in touch with them and we get them free entry to Celtic Park. And we've actually got a deal now, we get them a wee hot meal as well. So we can any kids that come along to the oil of the country, Ireland, wherever. As long as you can get a play with Celtic Park, you've got 50 tickets waiting for them. And it's all through funded by Celtic Fund. And where did this spring out of then, Joe? I mean, where, where did the idea come from? I mean, obviously, the, the ethos of Celtic being a, cha- a charitable club and a, a lot of giving involved and being a Celtic supporter, I suppose. I mean, where did the idea come for you to go? You know, let, let's start giving it to, to young to young kids who, who can't afford to get to the game. Um, the idea actually came as a campaign with Celtic fans about three years ago. It was a, a boy called Martin Kamer, I think, from Springburn. He was a CQN poster, but he took a strain of MS, an overnight form of MS he took, but it basically paralysed him from the neck down. So he was in hospital for about a year. And the Celtic fans, they uh, clubbed together and had all sorts of fundraising nights, quiz nights, race nights, bucket collections at Celtic Park, and they actually raised £68,000 so they could adapt his house over in Australia to get him at the hospital. So they had to get him a wet room and wrap at his house and bring his light switches and widen the doors. Uh, so basically, this idea, all the kids that done the bucket collection, the lads that organised that campaign were taking kids to the football as a treat, as a thank you. And basically, that's where the idea came to. How can we do this all the time? You know what I mean? There's enough seats at Jelly Park. We get club together. And so there was two guys for that campaign came and helped us. And that's how this all started. And originally, we didn't have any clue what we were doing, how many seats we wanted. We just asked people, basically, Celtic fans, if you can you give money? Can you buy a £50 season ticket? Can anybody give 20 quid? Anybody give a tenner? Uh, we ran like pound a week after people's wages, people were getting five on the week just straight off a bank account and the wages. And we ended up the original idea was for twenty seats. That was our, our plan. And we got that much money to the oil of the world that we ended up buying fifty seats. Who did for our first season? We had money for we say Australia, Germany, Canada, Singapore. It was absolutely unbelievable. You know, it was it was it was basically we didn't really know what they had time, how it was all going to work. But it runs, let's say it runs smoothly every week, but we've got a better idea of what we're doing now and how we do it. And the kids that take up the offer, you know, they didn't need the Celtic fans. It's kids from all over, all walks of life, you know, for the schemes, for everywhere you can think of. And every single kid that goes there has a ball. And they don't, they don't sit and cheer with them all, but they just they build up the excitement. And they walk through, walk up these stairs and into their seat. They sit right behind the angel then go, and it's fantastic. The rain is just, there's quite a lot of because they're sitting right next to Green Day. That helps all right enough. The river they're bouncing about all the rain. They, they gradually get in there and gradually get in there. See the time, half time comes, they're all going mental. All that hair is around about after them. And you know, I just let the rain have fun, you know what I mean? That's, that's what it's all about. And a big, a big percentage of the rains that come to, let's say, schools, youth clubs, whatever, a lot of them haven't even been to any form of football before. 
you only have what's well, the first experience of football was actually getting into Celtic Park. Well, I think in that atmosphere. So basically that's what we're, we're all about. And that's what we're trying to just promote future fans and get the kids a good day out sort of thing. And was there a model for you to build off but before this, Joe? I mean, was there anybody else doing something similar to this? No, absolutely nothing. Actually, we, we didn't have any idea that if it could work. So we had to basically go and talk to Celtic. We had to try and talk to your lawyers to set up the charity side yet. Uh, we didn't have a clue what they were doing. We were just us. Mm-hmm. We didn't really know what we were doing. So basically, all the, all the legal side yet took forever. That was horrendous. Because I said that get in touch with lawyers and get in touch with charity people. We, charity people come and try and talk us through the steps we had to take. Uh, all we wanted to do was take away from football, but it wasn't as simple as that. Do you know what I mean? Through all the health and safety and all the procedures, Celtics procedures, and uh, all the disclosure forms and things like that. Then it all changed to the PBG scheme. So it's been, it's been a few challenges along the lines that uh, a few hurdles that come to you just need to keep jumping over them and getting through them. Do you know what I mean? I don't know how we do it, but we just seem to always just get there in the end. As long as the wins get into the football, that keeps us happy. Aye. Can I ask you as well, Joe, like you said there was four four guys that started it. So how many like volunteers have you got at the minute that take to do with it? Uh, in total of nine, there's six trustees at the moment. I've flashed it a wee bit and there's three volunteers that come on. Uh, basically, the trustees have been set kind of a role for fundraisers and match day coordinators. The volunteers, they just they, 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 they have to be anything that we need to do the day or we can't get rid of the day and sort of thing. It'll be a phone call when a chance of doing this or going to go running in the air for this sort of thing. But see, we sit them. We were the lowest, you know, the half the things when they get done. Yeah. yeah and it must be it must be very time consuming for you guys like a guy like yourself and I know Tommy and stuff like that. So it must be t- time consuming for you guys uh, for the amount of time and effort he's must put into this. It must be a, a strain on yourself. It's, it's time consuming is a full time joke basically. And I'm 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 working during the day, but before I go to work, I'm I'm on the emails, looking at the forums, especially for like a dance or something. Some of if anybody wants tickets through all the forums, check my email, reply to emails, go to work, game, run about the wings, and you're sitting down about half eight, nine o'clock at night, and I'm looking after the computer to the one in the morning, then I'm back up at six, check my email, so it's just that constant. Then, and during, during the week, you know, well, every week right enough to be fair, but next week you've got a meeting, you're meeting a printer, you're meeting a accountant, you're going to meet people one of the day, sponsor blocks from you, or you're following out leaflets, or you know what I mean? You're, you're constantly doing something every week. And that's three years in the line. It's not really, it's not easier organised, but no time wise. Time wise, it's still a lot, a lot of time. And check through all the forums, all the PMs. I mean, one PM leads to five or six PMs. I could have, I could talk to five, six, seven people a night. So I'm going to start a new room the hop when ready before I've even done any work. You know what I mean? Aye. Uh, so your time just gets ate up constantly. See, 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 see one other thing I was quite surprised about. I had a, I had a sort of discussion with one of your guys today, and uh, I was I was really surprised because I can remember when it all started, and it was like I think it was CQN the lad Kano posted on, and I yeah, think it was through Paul Brennan's site who they were the catalyst to get this started. So I, I was under the impression that see all the Celtic sites like your K- CQN, your Kerrydale Street, your Huddleboard, Twists and Turns. Whatever site out there, I thought everybody had like a representative that was associated with the Kano Foundation that would actually put the word out there. But I'm hearing that it's not really, it's like there's only a couple of Celtic sites that really are taking this forward nowadays. It is really, I, well, I, I, I post mainly on Celtic Minded, so a lot of the boys are Celtic Minded know me. Uh, uh-huh. Big Mark, Big Market Health, which was all there, always on CQN. So basically, yeah. Celtic Minded and CQN are carried. The foundation really, I know there's a lot of uh, donations show out of the world, like TV dances and whatever we're having, it's people to be able to come. TNT, yep. uh, got a lot of help back here on TNT as well. You see the other boats are so big, Kerrydale Street is so big, it's really hard to break into them. You're, you're putting a post up and it just disappears, you know what I mean? They're trying to get the post back and it disappears again. So you're constantly chasing all the time on the boat. You don't really get a lot of feedback or participation for the boards really. So, 
And I said, what I'm trying to say is here now, for we, there's some guys in the Hail Hail Media Network, you know the guys for the temporary stand and stuff like that, so for Scott and Chuck and a few of the guys there, hopefully they'll listen to this or whatever, we can have a word with them through Twitter and hopefully we can get his mere traction because no matter what Celtic board that is we're posting on, I don't care what Celtic board them they post on, it's a Celtic board as far as I'm concerned, you know, and there's, I don't class there to be any rivalry between any Celtic sort of internet forum, but all just Celtic supporters know what the body is converse about Celtic. So I think for your group, uh, I think it'd be great if you could get a bit of traction in the two boards. So if MD's listening, uh, that posts in Kerrydale Street or the Huddle Board and you want to get involved in the Kano Foundation or you want to play a part of advertising on the boards, because obviously there's a massive amount of Celtic fans post on the Huddle Board, you know, and that would that would help your cause no end, because obviously it's yeah. charity we're looking for. And uh, uh-huh. I actually want to update twice. I actually want to update twice because uh, if they put us having the seats, it's not good. No good. The no good kids to follow them. Aye, aye. exactly. So, yep. so, so if we're if you're getting publicity, you don't always want. I'm not saying go to other board and try and get money, money, money. We no. need publicity. We need people to know what we do, why we do it. I think as far as I, I know, we weren't the only fans group doing it, and to my knowledge, we're still the only fans group that are doing it. And as I say, it's all funded Celtic fans, which is a people think that uh, Celtic are behind it. I'm not saying Celtic don't help, but Celtic, uh, but people are amazed when they, they realise that we actually have to buy a people ticket. They may see them tickets for, you know, it's over six grand or something, and they don't know what next year, but uh, people are amazed that people are like, hey, I don't know how you know. It's just fun, you know what I mean? You don't, you don't, you don't actually go. The court helps you, Celtic. You don't really go court in favour as such. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But no, the more, no. the more, the more times we can get involved there about the day, more groups will find out about us. You know what right. I mean? So more groups start applying, and the seats will start getting used now. Yeah. Know. And if anybody that listens to us is a member of a supporters club or anything like that and nobody in the supporters club knows about it you might have a youth club in your local town or whatever that comes to Celtic games and stuff like that there's 62 tickets here and obviously any Celtic fan or MD for any walk of life can get their names down in them so what would be the best way to contact I mean you can all contact through homeboys and we'll pass the message on but Joe what would be the best way for MD to listen to contact you guys well the best way is this day and age is probably Facebook and Go back to the Facebook and the Twitter accounts going. We've got a web website. This is www.kinofoundation.com. Uh-huh. That's a good that'll come up. Uh, that's basically the three main ways that communicate with people. Yeah. But we're trying to get we're trying to get links with the CSEs because you just mentioned there the real groups like the other country and a lot of them. We we've not got enough money. To, to bring the kids to the football, they are able to make their own way to the big park. So we're uh-huh. trying to, if we get a group for whatever, for whatever, I've ever been to the Grand Commander bus, we've done a couple of things with them. They'll go and pick up kids. John Chapel CSC got kids for nights with that, just to save their travel costs, you know what I mean? Yep. So if, yep. we, if we can get groups, just because you can't get there, don't, don't, don't stop applying, we'll try and help you get there. So then we might be able to pay for it, but we might find ways around about it. <laughs> Ah, you get exactly, and, and same way we've got buses for Belfast and stuff like that. Oh, so I think, yeah, but MD for Ireland as well. Get in touch, and as I say, their tickets there, and let's get the because the youth's the future of the club. And uh, so I know you've got a couple of uh, fundraisers going on in the month of April. You've got a play. It's, uh, it's going to be mad. Uh, it's getting chaotic. <laughs> so you get the this year we hadn't actually done anything. We've actually took a wee a wee break and we step back there, so see with the Oscar campaign, we were, uh-huh. we were going to do bucket collections and we're going to have a race night, but uh, the wee Oscar came along, he didn't want to, no, no stuff on his toes, he didn't want to keep asking the sales fans for the same town, do you know what I mean, so we took a wee step back and let, let the Oscar have you know, Celtic are being a big charity driver and all of that, 125, 125, so a lot of, a lot of people doing their marathon and bike runs and you know, all that, they're doing it for the Celtic charity and all, so it's been, it's been hard for us this year, so we've not really done any fundraising at all. But this year, uh, this April, we've actually got two functions on the kit. The play I'm not a bully with him, and it's Saturday the 6th of April after the Hibs game, and it's in the Kerrydale Street, £15 a ticket. Uh, and it's 
presente de Ichu, so, che è una danza di Dio, la pasta di Ichu, e anche ci li fa i fai una sacca di Ichu, in Gila Latina, a Dono fa come la vita, di Ichu, di Sua, la sala di Ichu, di Sua, di Ichu, 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 Uh, if anybody wants to add to that, I know you can get in touch. Uh, so that's on Saturday, is that a... Uh, Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Hopefully the weather will be fine for them. And where is it? It's at Brayhead. Brayhead Arena. Aye, escape to Brayhead. And normally we only have the two functions. Try and have a function around about November. With the kids Christmas party, that's my function. So I'd have to the Christmas party and at the end of the season one. You see, next year we don't actually know how much our season tickets are going to cost. The way it works is you buy a £50 season ticket. But as you know, last year there was a big hurdle there with them, they've scrapped them. I think they jumped up to £130 for them. Uh-huh. So, so if the charges are back £140 again this year, then we've got to take a severe hit. You know what I mean? So I've had to, had to try and put in the bungee jump, I've had to try and add the play, basically just because they might not have enough money for season tickets next year. You know what I mean? So I'll try to add in another couple of... I know it's... We don't, we're very conscious of having the same people all the time for the same money, but it wasn't, it wasn't really... We didn't have much option. You know, we did this year. Basically, so, we don't know if Celtic are going to take the season tickets next year. Tell, tell me something. See the 50 quid... I mean, my kids have still got the 50 quid season tickets. See, because I was so, on the so, auto so, renewal. Yeah, so we, we, we got them last year because... Right, we're, okay. We're in early right. enough. Right. This, I think I've done away with them now. They need to be careful, to be honest with you, because see if they start bumping them up to 130, 140 pounds, there'll be, be more kids no going. Because that's, that's, to be honest with you, that's part of the reason I buy my two, you know, because I, I, I don't take the two of them together, because Rory, I take him with his wee pal, or I take my lassie, Ellie, with her wee pal, because I don't take the two of them together, because they fight like cat and dog. So I'm essentially taking somebody else, but for fifty quid, what, what is what's that for a, for a season? It's nothing. But if you start making like hundred and fifty quid each, yeah, like three three hundred quid, yeah. top of that, six hundred. You get fifty, you get fifty two seats. So any increase at all is going to be like, you know what I mean? Aye, big time, and that's aye, that could be that could be five grand if they put a hundred pound on aye, top. Aye, if they were over six hundred, it could be eleven grand for season tickets for your That means a really Try and pull in 16, 20 grand a year, you know what I mean, to keep this thing running. Okay. I know it doesn't sound a lot of money when you look at all the other campaigns that are going on, but that's, see, for us to earn a hundred pounds, it's hard. It's a lot of, that's a lot of work for me, I'm chasing people. Running about being people's tickets, running people's goals for money, I'm still doing that three years in the line, you know what I mean? And it, you know yourself, if it's the same brand you're offering constantly and constantly asking for money, it starts to, People start getting fed up, you know, and money's yep. tight in a lot of people. So I think you need to be innovative, innovative in how you sort of go about collecting the money. So if anybody's got any ideas out there, or anybody in the Celtic community, got any ideas how you can help the Kano Foundation get in contact with these guys? Because right. any I'm, ideas, even if even if we can't use it, the new, we might be able to do it. Might be in a position to do it next year. So, yeah. I mean, so if your idea doesn't get used, it might come handy further down the line. Yeah. You get Mr. Larkin to write you a book. I think there's some stories as well. Do you want to jump in there, Paul? Have you anything you want to ask Joe? I, I mean, how much support are you getting for the club, Joe? Because it's, it seems to me that you know, you're talking about the work you're doing and all the rest there. And you know, <laughs> you, mentioned, you mentioned figures here, which quite frankly is a drop in the ocean for Celtic. I mean, there's a the club helping you in any other ways other than, you know, just accommodating um, your views and stuff? Um, the club are, are helping a bit more now. As far as hard, it's hard to break into them. But you've got to remember, we are, it is only 50 seats we've got, do you know what I mean? We're not, we're no, uh, massive, we're no, there's no bit of voice, there's no commanding. But, see, the key thing, like Christmas party, Celtic are brilliant, they gave us food, they played there, they gave us gift sets and all that for the way. Uh, they're trying, they're trying a bit hard on new Celtic, but we've still got to pay for the season tickets. Normally, I think we get so many kids tickets, I think we get four or five, maybe even five or three years, I think, for them, mm. child tickets, but the rest are full adult tickets we've got to pay. So the adult right. tickets are 
just as much as the Audi 50 cricket because they're fighting right. on the most down in the hill cricket, you know what I mean? I mean, so I think... That, I, I, I don't think there were any worries at all. I mean, I know there was an absolute disaster with the £140 season tickets for the kids this season, but I don't think you'll have any um, clams on that score next season because there's going to be a big decrease in prices. That's pretty much been confirmed by Selic uh, in the last couple of days. But, I mean, can you just sort of take us through, if you say somebody wants to take a group of kids, can you just yeah. take us through the kind of day that they would, they, they, they would have when they come to see you at Celtic Park? Yes, yeah, um well, we, we would meet the kids at half past one to the Green Brigade, corner of the ground, right mm-hmm. inside that, right at the gate, the big metal gate from Kerrydale Street. We meet the kids there mm-hmm. uh, about half past one. So we normally, half past one, two or four. So now sometimes we have two or three groups going to see one, but we have a wee bit. The kids turn up, we give them like a goodie bag, or a wee, wee Celtic bag with crisps, sweets, juice. We actually give them a car. Uh, we're going to actually... To the, to the next game, tell you again, it's 50 programs. So we're going to get a match day program included in their wee bag, in their wee wristband. So they get a wee goodie bag. Mm-hmm. Then when they go into the game, they'll get either a hamburger or a hot dog, a pack of crisps, a can of juice, uh, while they're actually at the game. So they will, and they're sitting right behind the, and they say the Rangers then go, they'll live in the Lions stand, they're sitting right, right behind the goal. So the kids that are actually, they're amazed they're so close, especially when they're after time, they're forced to the trade, they'll come in and warm up. And, we were actually a wee boy from Ireland last year, and all his pals were laughing at him, but he was kidding about this. Well, a whiteboard, a wee tiny whiteboard they had. But the wee boy, I don't know who to give an idea of the time he traded away, but he rattled on the whiteboard of a black inky. Can I get your top or your boots? Yeah. So he just kept holding this up. <laughs> he kept it out of his day, and all his pals were laughing at him. And at the end of the game, big, big Fraser came here, tried to take off his cap, and he flung into the crowd, and he's like, no, no, for that wee boy, for that wee boy. The wee boy picked up. <laughs> the wee boy went, Are you not saying that? Can you not say that? He was trying to get him to say that he was But oh, 10 out of 10, the wee man. He was absolutely <laughs> happy in his day. He was there for the iron. He was there for the iron. That's initiative, isn't it? That's, that's, that's a great initiative. <laughs> I, I just couldn't believe that all you, all you wee pals were flying them for the first what, 45 minutes of the game. And he didn't, didn't bat an eyelid, didn't bother. Because he must have must have known his heart or this is going to work, you know what I mean? But, uh, <laughs> you know, my pounds of jealousy and walk down the ground, they're all trying to pull it off over and they're all... Yeah, I think they actually had them on the shooters. They carried them out the shooters. That's brilliant. The match experience for the kids is... Oh, I'm going to see it really, but it is. It's absolutely fantastic. See the amount of uh, thank you letters we get for the wee community centre, all the wee groups. Heartwarming, to be honest, it's amazing. It must be so, great. It must be great for you, Joe, as well, to watch them there at the game and just think, you know, like that you've contributed to them having such a great time. I mean, it must be, it must be very fulfilling think, as well. I think that's what keeps us going. See all the rules we work and all the running about, all the art. You go to these meetings, we all argue with each other, and you should be doing this, and you should be doing that. But seeing a Saturday, the three kids walk out of there, and a smile. That's what it's all about. That is, honestly, nothing better. See any kids walk over these steps. And that, that stadium just develops all around about them. It's, their faces are priceless. Honestly. This is what happens. That, yeah, that is what does it for me. The enjoyment they can get out of that is fantastic. Honestly. Aye, absolutely. And while we're on about the stadium, eh, well, you, you've got a wee story you can tell us about a goal you scored at Celtic Park. One of your pals hey, you, slipping you, into this. You've been digging, you've been digging on you, you know. I've been well set up here. <laughs> tell, tell, tell us about it. <laughs> um, well, I scored about, oh, I must have actually hit the album now. I'm going to tell you how close I was to go. <laughs> 30 yards. 30 yards, Wallish, top corner. It was actually a Celtic Aid game. Everybody paid money to play. Oh, well, Harp, Harper's done it. We done it through this show. We did a big raffle uh, for the football aid. So Harper's got half, and uh, I think it was a lad Craig. He, uh, he he's got the other half. So they're going to play in it. So they can't wait to go on it. So tell us, mates, so what happened? Uh, well, basically, I think my team went six two. It was actually the boy for Cheryl Rangers that couldn't make it. They actually made the game the same day as the Celtic game or something. So I didn't go to Paul. So I ended up with the place. The raffle was Celtic main. Now won the raffle, and I ended up with the place. They go down to the full strip, the name on your strip, and all that. Uh, me and the rain are running about the park, so I think before the game out, so I'm going to say off, and basically just ran the show, I thought I'm going to say, 
It's funny show, cracked in one for the 30 yards and I'll put to the DVD and you'd be watching it and you'd have to wait for him and he'd watch it that way. <laughs> oh, brilliant, man. That's, that's something I love you for. I'm just like that, that. I was there in Lisbon for the game and see the boy that scored there, he'd kick. It was there, the, did you see it? It was on YouTube. I, I did, I, I did. Oh, the, right. boy caught, the boy crossed the end, the guy there, he'd kick at the top corner on the stadium in Asheville in Lisbon. Just <laughs> put, put me six feet under now, my life's complete. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> and your initial reaction straight away is just to put your hands in the air and run towards the stands uh, <laughs> even though nobody's there <laughs> always a fantastic experience man it's the main best day of my life right. oh no oh, brilliant because you walk down the changing room you're, you're sort of hanging up there with your name on it you walk into the tunnel and they walk on and it's going up absolutely amazing oh brilliant superb mate superb so, uh, is it a family's, uh, Joe, as you said earlier on, a family's want to call in and ask Joe anything about the Cano Foundation, find out a bit more, he's a Skype in. Absolutely, anybody, I mean, feel free, uh, I, I don't know if people are scared to call in, or I don't know, maybe they're afraid. Anybody wants to hear about my goal again, I'll certainly get through it, I'll tell you what, <laughs> have you any video over there on YouTube, Joe, we can go through it step by step? <laughs> Okay, I'll get, I'll get on YouTube for next week. We can get Jason and Paul to analyse it, be like Gary Neville and uh, <laughs> Claire Tilsley. We, we can get it for the intro for the show, Joe Dane commentary on the South Shore. I've got my goal. <laughs> can I ask you something, Joe? I mean, uh, I mean, you're saying the Kino Foundation's going wild. Is it, is it three years now? This is a third season, huh? Third season, I mean... Do you think further down the line, it seems like, I mean, it's such a great initiative, it's such a great thing to do. Is it the kind of thing you think in the future that a lot of the kids that are available now, <coughs> it might wind up feeding itself, uh, feeding its own volunteers back into uh, itself? Well, you would think, you'd hope that, because, uh, see, the feedback we get is phenomenal. The kids, even the, the adults and the kids, we get a lot of, we get a lot of repeat applications, but it might be like, See, it's what one school takes their primary sevens. Six months later, a five months take their primary sixes. Do you know what I mean? We get a lot of repeat applications for these different years. Maybe one week, couple of teams take their thirteens, then it was their under ten. So we do see a lot of the, uh, the same applications, but it's actually different kids that's coming all the thing. So that, that might be in the future. We might start helping. Do you know what I mean? Or donating to us, or at the start we had a three-year plan, and we've done everything in a three-year plan. At the end of this season, we'll sit down, bang it together, we'll get another year's plan, maybe two years' plan together, and just set new targets and new goals. We always wanted to get bigger. We wanted to like, cross border participation. So last year we took uh, 50, 40 kids through to Wigan, with the Wigan Spawns again. And this year we've got kids from uh, Coke Press, kids from Livingston going down to Wigan, and the 30th of this month to Wigan Norge. So we're trying to get English teams involved, we try to target. The, sun, the ones about four hours away, Sunday, Newcastle, Bolton, and even the Premier League, and Wigan. So we're we'll actually trying to get kids up to the areas as well. Jimmy uh, Carragher's got a foundation, his dad was on the phone asking about bringing kids up to Liverpool. So the work is getting out there, sort of thing, but it's just time. Well, things like that just don't happen overnight, you know what I mean? You've got to work on it and keep phoning them and contacting them. And, well, like Wigan was supposed to bring kids up this, this year. Wigan home picture is actually in your home picture. So they couldn't get a date to come up. So it looks like they're going to need it to next season when they come up. So they will. But hopefully that, things like that will happen. We'll try again. We'll try to get Sunderland going in there as well. So we might get Sunderland next year. We'll take kids to me. But it all depends on funding right now. But we've you... brought a lot of goals we've achieved in the first, in the first, say, first couple of years. Let's talk about, we we'll even talk about that. Like, Maybe buying something away and tickets. So if Motherwells or whatever come in, eh, they can maybe bring in a couple of wee fans. No means to, to get the kids back into sport. We're talking if they go to Olympic Games or Snooker Games or whatever. Just anything, any wee quirky ideas that can help us promote ourselves. We'll look at it. See, maybe we'll be able to do that. We'll certainly look at it and talk about it and see what we can achieve. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and as I say, if anybody's got any ideas that's listening there, and it's downloading the podcast, make sure you get in contact with these guys and give them some of your your know how or your ideas. Uh, I, or... I, even if you think it's a wee crazy idea, it might 
they say it might work, it might just be something even with Sony. It might be a wee simple thing, but if it benefits the kids' match day experience, then do go for it 100%. Yeah, it's, an amazing, it's, it's an amazing thing to have. I mean, have, have you found that any other football clubs, kind of, well, supporters, adapting the model that you've kind of set up now because i mean whenever i was a kid i mean I, we we didn't have any money when i was a kid to go to celtic park like my family didn't have any money uh so it wasn't until i was around 18 19 when i was making my own money that i got to go over you know i mean but have you found any, any other supporters groups sort of seeing what you're doing and thought to themselves you know what we can do that because it, it does seem like something that nearly every football club should have install, uh, you know Im- implement and as part of their match day experience you know because bringing kids to the game i mean you see kids at the game and they're full of life, they're bouncing around, and, and and they do make for an atmosphere for yourself, especially like if, if you're a father, I'm a father, Paul's a father, I mean, whatever. It's the kind of thing that puts a smile on your face, you know, just seeing kids at the game, because it's nice to see people bringing kids to the game. But have there been any other supporters clubs sort of a copy Not of what you've done? No. Have, we haven't had any direct contacts with any other club, supporters clubs that we know that do the same thing. There's things like the Sunderland Foundation and Man United Foundations, they don't do it. There's a, there's a kind of similar organisation, Hibs, Hibs Run, and it's like they, they buy season tickets. Every day they, they get companies to buy season tickets, and that company will donate that maybe two season tickets to that youth group. So that youth group or youth club will bring two some two two rangers and they'll go and sit in their seats. So it's similar but different. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they'll, they'll, bring, they'll bring the whole club for a game, and just two people to that club going, and it's big companies that buy this by the seats that has it's not actually than fan donation, you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, that, that's only that's real one at the moment. There's talk there has been talk about us opening up, why don't we open it up to like your mother Wells and Jonathan and what but they would need to they would need to run it themselves. You know what I mean? We we couldn't we've not got the funding to go and date St Jonathan, go and date Motherwell or wherever I've ever been. They their fans would need to pick up the band and date. We could we could do them but experience of how to do it, what we do, where we get t-shirt contacts, printer contacts, you know what I mean? We could give them that information or that, but we couldn't actually go and do it for hell or no. We could, for one, we couldn't ask Celtic fans to go and uh, supplement Motherwell fans or whoever, do you know what I mean? Aye, but, aye. Just know, if anybody needs help to do it or get any ideas, maybe the pals or fans of other clubs, some, Speak to them. Somebody's threw up an idea. Them. Somebody's threw up an idea here on here on the on the chat room saying uh, make Kano Foundation silicone wristbands. I think it, th- they just have those before. Yes, we had wristbands, but we gave them away to kids. So we did. We did a wee wee thing, but a thicker one I got this year, a thicker embossed one. The kids actually love them. We say that the kids do love them. So I'm not really sure I had one before. That's that's how that's how I, I'm not really sure I had one. So I, I got one off somebody. Yeah. We actually get letters to kids saying that the wristband broke and any chance can they buy another one so we'd normally just send another one before. <laughs> <laughs> See, see, when you say they're their own, there's no other teams doing it. I don't think you're being very truthful. Surely the Huns must have a world record of the zombies. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they must have a world record of the amount of kids they would take through the charity. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story. See, see about a year and a half ago, it was actually a Rangers director came in and couldn't believe that Rangers were only doing this. And none of us wanted to help, but we were like, oh, no way, we're not going to start doing it. I know, no way. But <laughs> He couldn't believe that Rangers were only doing a similar scheme to us. You know, whether he, he's putting plans in motion to do it, I don't know, because I've never really much contact with him since. But he was amazed at what we did, absolutely amazed. Even we told him how we go about it and how, how it all started, he was actually amazed. He was there's, a couple, there's a couple of good ideas coming through here in the chat room. Someone else has said that Glasgow's green and white has said, you can, can't you, can you, can you apply for a grant via the Lado for local charitable causes? Um, we are, we are, we are charity now, we have charity status, so we can start applying for grants out with, but uh, basically we'll just get more, once we get the account signed up and things like that, we can start having charity uh, all the different places. The lottery, lottery, we can apply, but I don't think it'll be anything major, no, I mean, it might be local. No. Somebody else has a the pilots here in the chat room and he says uh, a player strip signed by squad and donated after every game would pay for a season ticket a week. Oh easy, aye. Easy that that would be amazing. That would be absolutely fantastic. That's that's one, one thing Joe I was thinking was uh, just after what Jason said about taking his kids and I've taken kids and I know 
I mean, I'll be honest, I had some absolute nightmares at the games with the kids. I was thinking, can we do this pie beauty take our kids? I was thinking, you know, I'd go to the pub. <laughs> you know, kind of a skull maybe every week and just, oh, you know, yeah. pick them up about six hey. or <laughs> This is this is where the disclaimer comes in. Now. We have no care of people for the kids. It's the people that bring the kids. <laughs> you, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can drop them off for the five ways. Me and Paul will get you there if it's seven o'clock. <laughs> hey, years ago, I got left outside the pub when oh. I was drinking a pint of four of the games. That was a done thing, wasn't it? <laughs> Pack it, pack it, press the car, away you go. See you in a new Back in the good old days when things were safe. There was a full team of you out there. <laughs> Hogs, you got to be. Next thing, you, did, you didn't want to be the last way in there. <laughs> so after the dads came and got them. <laughs> and you're still there, where's she? <laughs> it's a way to see a man about a dog. Still there, all four waiting in the big gate, so you can to see the last 10 minutes. <laughs> oh no, change days man, change days No you can't get in, you can't get in there without 20 quid in your pocket for a hot dog So I mean, as I say, you're, you're not just getting them into the game You're getting them a goodie bag, you're getting them something to eat and stuff like that no, That's absolutely I, brilliant Well that was Celtic, that was uh, Mercy, the boys, the Mellies boys They had a meeting with Celtic and uh, the catering company Lindley's And that, right. that's how that came about The boys, the Mellies boys, kind of a kingdom with the prices and whatever And they, they that was I'm just hearing about us. So they right. they go and touch me and I had a meeting with them and they come up with this deal. So we'll get a go at the end of the season, we'll see how it ends. But it's a lot of money, it's about hey, for hundred for forty wins, but hundred and twenty quid a game. So right. each number will be fifty two seats and sometimes it's not thirty five, sometimes it's forty five. So that was doing about four forty wins a game. So I wouldn't they were asking the CSEs for a hundred pound sponsorship. Yep. Every team every group that comes has put their name on the big screens. So we'll have it sponsored by whoever. And yeah, it's actually a boy Stephen Kearney for the affiliation of Service Sports Clubs. He's actually said it's three hundred pounds for the next three games. Who has to, to pay for the kids' names? And he said he would contact put a note with all his other members and see if any of other members they said he's sure they can fall to the end of the season. But it looks like the kids are gonna get a hot meal right up to the end of the season at least anyway. My bread had money to in cyber terms, per CSC. Michael Davids in the air, they've sent him a pound up as well. So, if that catches on, we need 19 CSCs for the 19 home games next season, you know what I mean? And that way every kid will get a hot meal. Because some of these kids come, no, no, no try to plead here, but some of these kids come and even a jackal one, do you know what I mean? Uh, so, that's how we thought we'd change for giving them the, the Mars bar and the fact that Christy Irish will a hot meal so that the veins are at least getting fed when they're there, do you know what I mean? Give them some Aye. So how many, how many kids have you had in total, Joe, through the turnstiles for you started? Oof, oof. So that, this is what, the third year, we've uh-huh. actually just broken the 1,500 kids barrier uh-huh. in, the, in Celtic Park for nothing. And we're actually looking at it. I meet with Celtic Park all week. See, by the end of the season, we should have 1888 kids. We're hoping to break out here at the end of the season or the start of the next season. So we're hoping Celtic we're going to latch on to that and make a wee big deal about it, you know what I mean, for 1888. Uh, here's so, the opening. That's nearly 2,000 kids in three years that we're trying to gain. That's brilliant. That's amazing. That's great. That's when you look at it that way, isn't it? See, when you think about it as well, see a lot of them didn't come from Celtic backgrounds and things like that. So, say at the 2,000 kids, say 100 of them or 200 of them have converted into, say they've converted into Celtic supporters. Just think just think the revenue stream Celtic will make for them in years to come. Yeah, yeah. well, I don't know. I, but you see the revenue stream that Celtic, especially you've seen the kids come up to England, in the Aberdeen, Ireland. They're, they're an hour in that shop, they're buying strips, they're buying scarves, they're buying pennants, you know what I mean? Gloves, hats. They're in that superstore for an hour before they come and meet us. Celtic get they get a revenue stream phase, sort of thing. The future fans, we've, we've actually, well, I know we've converted, we've converted Hart, Pibs, Rangers, fans, kids that come, they'll sit there and they'll know why they use healthy by the them, but they end up, they're, they're converted because it's such a good time. And I, I know for a fact that fans with Hibs, Hart, Rangers, and St. Mirren fans. I've been contacting them. Hello? Hello. Joe, you there? He's dropped off there. 
He still looks uh, Still looks like he's on. He's starting back at. He says, Joe! He just hang up on him and call him back. Hold on. Alright. Uh, just do the move from group. Go back again. Hold on a second. Do, 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 do. No, it's not. Again. Oh, nothing happening there. Must Call have failed. Damn. Hold on. Try him again. Could have lost his connection. That's probably what it is. Ah, it happens to me the odd time. This game can be ropey. Sorry, well, please. Have we watched that DVD in that goal at Parky? <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there watching him while he's talking to us. Sorry about this dead air, folks, but uh, these things happen on a live show. No, well, on a low-tech live show. But I've right. lost them. I've lost them for a second time there. Right, try, try him in a couple of minutes. Or he'll go back in himself. He knows how to use Skype anyway. He's used it before. It's amazing to see guys like that. You know what I mean? Just for like, it's an amazing because it's, it's such a public promotion of the club's ethos as well. You know what I mean? It's like just give give the people that, that don't have and can't afford. And I think it's just fantastic. You know, it's big. And the fact that there's nobody else doing it. It's just amazing. It, it, it gives you a real sort of lump in your throat to, to know that it's sort of happening within your yep. club on the match day and you can see them there and you think to yourself, I mean, you, you, you don't get that anywhere else, you know? I know, I know. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll meet you get in the... We'll... You get an hour hail hail media message board or something like that, see if we can sponsor the kids' food at one of the games or something like that. You know, because I think these guys need all the help they can get. When we not get uh, your mom. <coughs> Joe, Joe, you there? Yes, I'm back. I'm back. You just dropped off there for a second, that's all right. We were just going to get you sponsorship there as well, but since you've got off. I thought you'd stop me after that one, Shane. No, mate. It's brilliant. Fantastic. What were you going to say there, Joe? No, the er, Joe. What was I going to say? What I was going to say is when I say about getting Hail Hail Media or whoever, or Homeboys, whatever, to sponsor the food for one of the games or something like that. Say about your mum with the pies. I mean, you know, got the inside scoop and the hot food. Remember your mum you had on with the pies? I hate, aye, because we we the guy on, Joe. That's who Joe's talking about. Aye, Did right. The Mealy's boys, right? Oh, right, 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 right. I was having an issue with the deal. He said, "Have you been doing a bit of the standard arcade in the Celtic Park? How they're going to upgrade it, or the things they're going to offer?" I didn't join it, that's right. I didn't realise it was the same person. All right, aye. Um, so, see, we'll talk talk to us as well. See what we can do for help for a wee bit of sponsorship or whatever through the show or anything like that. Uh, we, we we could do a giveaway of something that, that down the line. I'm sure you know a raffle or something. We, we can do a raffle uh, through the show because I know we raised. Okay, I'll get, I'll get you. I'll get you. We've got this. I'll get you a raffle prize if you just organise a raffle. You can uh, make it a bigger audience that I can reach. Do you know what I mean? I will see. Uh, the, our, our kind of raffle works, Joe. I mean, we, we only sell a certain amount of tickets. Do you know what I mean? And it's a fairly low number. What was it the last time? Do you have 100 tickets at a tenner? A hundred tickets at a tenner, but one of the one of the pri- we gave it a great prize. One of the prizes was half of that football aid game, and then we had another couple of right cracking prizes. So the guy that won it, I mean, it was a fact that the prize was worth more than a grand itself. Do you know what I mean? So if you give out good prizes, it's no bother to get a tenner off somebody, but you can't do things like that too often. But for a couple of quid, I'm sure we could do some. If it's a half decent prize, a couple of quid, I'm sure we could get. Three hundred or whatever people through Twitter and stuff like that, through listeners like this, and it's as I say, it's all going to use guys. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll get Celtic supporters to dip into their pockets and sort of give us a bit. There's a there's a message here in the uh, in the, in the chat room as well. I'll just come up there now. Glasgow's great and wide again. Guys, I've just contacted someone as well in with the players in regard to the donating of a shirt. We'll keep you all posted. So uh, if you're listening there, I mean, contact us on at uh, homeboys at gmail dot com or what's what's the email address for the Kano Foundation and Joe? I, I should have that. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, contact on. I didn't get contact that. Contact us at the Kano Foundation dot com. Contact us at the fa- at the Kano Foundation dot com dot com dot com. Right. So if anybody has any ideas. It's either contact us or contact the Kano Foundation. Contact us at the Kano Foundation.com or even contact us at homeboys at gmail.com. Any ideas, anything at all, uh, because this is definitely something every, every, everybody, I mean, wants to see keep going, you know, and going from strength to strength, you know. It's fantastic, you know, as these, as these kids grow older and as they become Celtic fans, you know, they're, I mean, that'd be a great story to, to tell people in years to come. 
you know what I mean? Uh, you're, see, you're, you're, see the, good, the good love factor. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, people walk up to us during the game, before the game, and that's my handy money. They know what they're doing, my handy money. I'll be asked you what you're doing because you're getting it in your bag to pay them the money. Because we, we hear you back here inside the stadium. It's not just your kids. If a wee kid's kidding about, you'll give them a wee bag of three years. They'll give them. They try and get all the kids get something, you know what I mean? Or right. sit around the booth. So a lot of people walk up to us and just give them a wee tenner. Sorry, if they don't give you a tenner, we can be sorry. Fantastic, you know what I mean? But it's in like further in the lane. I mean, you, you've already got something like fifteen. You've got fifteen hundred kids who are further in the lane when they're older and talking to their mates and going to ask questions like, "How did you get into Celtic?" And you've already got fifteen hundred that are going to say, "Well, the Kano Foundation got me into Celtic." You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and long may that continue and keep rolling on because that's, that's that's brilliant. You know, I mean, and that's what we say that no problem. That's fantastic. You think about it that way, Yeah, I mean, it's just like you'll have a large portion of Celtic supporters. After us, th- th- that will have you to thank. Yes, and the, the initial contact with Celtic through this scheme, man. Right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 I mean, th- there's, there's, there's no better way for a young person to become involved in a football club, you know, than, than, than through charity. And uh, I know, I just oh. can't say. Actually, if actually we fit on in Coatbridge, Kirkwood FC, Kirkwood Boys Club, and they start because they enjoy themselves so much. They actually we could make a new set of scripts end of last season and they asked us could they wear their logo. So we told them, like, sponsor them or not, well, we'll look at it, but I don't really think they can afford it. And they're like, no, we'll put it on their strips. So they're under 14 when they're playing all season with their logo and blazed out their strips. And they've actually gone to date with their under mines and their under 11s next season as well. So they're, they're going to start promoting us through, through their league. So they are. So, and the boy, the boy that runs them, he, he went to the wee fundraising night, the wee prize giving night, and he was sitting and saying that eh, the court would be a lot of, a lot of ways they can't afford their boots and blah, 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 and the clubs go to try and get together and buy them boots before they can see, so the they can the start enjoying the, the football. So we've actually I, I put a wee thing on the Facebook now asking for, if you've any old, see like your Wayne's football boots are lying in a cupboard of two sizes, two wee, bring them to us, so we'll come and collect them. The they're doing, they're starting to distribute them out to all the wee teams, local teams that so the kids can start getting involved in football because if they want to can't afford the boots, we'll give them a pair of boots to go and play football with a team. You know what I mean? Can I ask you a question, Joe? I mean, not that I want to bring this into the, 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 the dire territory, but I mean, you, yourself meeting a lot of these kids and, and, and a lot of this experience, I mean, have you kind of been surprised by some of the level of, you know, Impoverished backgrounds that a lot of these kids come come from. Has, has, has any well, has any of it kind of shocked you? Uh, sometimes there's only really it was a wee boy for one of the schemes. I don't mention which scheme, but there was see last year the played till on the Tuesday. The game was postponed this Saturday. They played on a Tuesday night. There was like minus twenty or something, and that wee boy turned up with a t-shirt on. So yeah. I actually was there. Normally we don't have any care of you. Any the kids that the carers that bring them, but I actually there one the carers. And he's like, that's why he's masking them out. I said, but Jesus Christ, crazy. He's in. That wee boy actually had to get took away with ambulance people. So he had to get took an ambulance room with a, the wee tinfoil blanket room. That wee boy was taking hypothermia. Was that called? My you know God. I mean? Jesus Christ. That was, that was a wet, freezing cold Tuesday night last year against Kamar. And it was minus. We, we were sitting with wee hands, wee gel hand warmers on that. Try to heat it up. End up with the kids left about half an hour into the game, so it was just too cold. But I'll be going to turn out with that jacket, you know what I mean? Bloody hell. That's, that's, that's crazy. That's grim. But, uh, oh, bloody hell. Trust you, Joe, to put a damn thing. <laughs> no, no, it's just what's just what's 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 it's one, of, it's, it's one of those things people people sort of kind of think in the back of their mind, go like you know what backgrounds do these kids come from, you know. And I know, I mean, it's and, and obviously it stays, you, it stays in the back of your mind. <laughs> obviously, 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 the Kino Foundation, what you do, is completely magnanimous regardless of background. You know what I mean? I mean yeah, it, 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 there, it, there's, it's no, there's no social criteria. criteria. It's those, those just, I know it's tightened under the privilege, but it's stroke deserving. So if any kids stay, they can't go back, back back times in the answer or something like. Do you think they deserve a good wee day out? Get in touch. It's not just from the privileged kids that come. Do you know what I mean? It's any 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 age group up to thirteen. If it's fourteen, fifteen, we'll think about it. We we'll can upgrade tickets or whatever. But we normally try to stick to the thirteens and under. It's normally basically like fifty pound season tickets. Yeah, because I mean, but, I, I think a lot of people maybe just don't understand that, like, 
poverty, poverty has so many things attached to it. I mean, some people, obviously nobody's proud of being impoverished and, and being from, from a, 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 you know, a difficult background, but, and that might even put some people off approaching something like the Kino Foundation, you know, because maybe some people don't want, it, want people to know that, you know, they come yeah. from a difficult background and they struggle. Maybe their parents don't want people to know. You know what I mean? Because it's it, it, it is one of those things that has got a social stigma attached to it. You know, and uh, for someone like the Kino Foundation, like I said, to come along and be magnanimous about it and say, listen, we're just here to give Wayne's a, a football experience, regardless of their background yeah. or where they come from. You know, and I think that's it's 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 a great way to do it. You know, because there is no social criteria that needs to be fulfilled for, for you to get a ticket. We've actually kids see it was a youth group in Drum Chapel. But all the kids say if the drum chapel would fight for the kids for Yoka and the Yoka runners would fight for the kids for the White Inch. So with that group and drum, that youth group and drum chapel done, we got all them together and brought them to the game. But they made them sit in the minibus beside each other. They made them sit at the game beside each other. So they weren't just three wee gangs sitting in the game. They were all split up and sitting beside the ones and all the fight me. Do you know what I mean? It's used for that. Primary schools use it for to tell the kids they're going to the game. But their grades that they improve, their homework needs to improve, or they don't go to the football. So it is used for a, such a variation uh, of things. I know it's going to the football, but all these individual groups, like the youth groups, if they don't behave at youth groups, they don't go to the football in two weeks' time. Do you know what I mean? Aye. So they all, use, they all use it for their own different these things. And it's, when they get there, they all just gel together, because Wayne's are Wayne. He wants one start stowing the seat and singing and swinging or careful, but they all start throwing. We tried the Green Brigade, got the flags, they made the flags, uh, and all the way just to get a flag. And this year, the Green Brigade paid for the flag, so we actually made them, the Green Brigade still gave the money for them, and the flags helped just in the atmosphere, really, do you know what I mean? Get the kids in there, get some involved. Yeah, and the Scarf's good for getting the main on involved. Yeah, well, that's what I think, you know, 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 that's but that, I mean, that, that, must, that must amaze you, Will, that, I mean, that it's grown so, many, it's grown so many legs. I mean, you've got football teams wearing your badge. You've got uh, people using it as an incentive to sort of, you know, keep, uh, mm-hmm. keep young people, you know, with, within their self-discipline. You know, and that's... Yeah, I mean, we need to get to know about the letters that come in after the kids have been, things like that. We've got a group there for uh, West Belfast, and we go to a wee tourist season before, before the game, and they were all amazed. And one of the things that kept coming up in the letters was they were sitting with Neil Lennon sit. That's what they kept saying. They were amazed. They were seeing their pitch and they were, do you know what I mean? After I thought the game was a big thing for them, but no, they beat two. They loved the beat two. So they just beat 20 minutes off their tour before the game and it was, I mean, their day, it was fantastic for them. It's all these different things that sometimes we don't know about to after it. Aye, uh, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, it's fantastic. I mean, I can't say enough good words about it, to be honest with you, Joe. I mean, I mean, we could definitely be here all night, just, just, just going through what it is you do and and and, and how it's affected people, and and I, 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 I pretty, much, I hope further down the line, if we're still going further down the line, if this network's going, maybe this show's going, hopefully, I'd like to get someone on at some point further down the line who, whose first contact was with Celtic and sort of and see how it affected their lives, you know. Well, I actually just got a text there, you know, about ten minutes ago. Who's talking? There's a group from Livingston. Uh, and the man, the guy just texts me and says, at the end of the season, they're under 16s, they're going to be having a game against the adults, that all the adults are going to get sponsored, and obviously they're going to give us the money. So we, we quirky things like that, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. Just because just cause they've been along to a game, that they're going to try and give his money back. It's is absolutely amazing. I said, I won't go that text 10 minutes ago. So I did. Fantastic. Anybody else want to jump in there or we start talking about football? Uh, let's go to the game. Right, so or, or we're going to start talking about football now. Joe, you, you, you're going to stay on as a, as a guest panel. Yes. So uh, don't don't feel like because we're talking that you can't just jump in. Because some people sometimes you get people on the show, and we uh, we end up waffling and people don't jump in. So if you have any any opinions, just feel free to jump in. Tell us we're talking out of rubbish, whatever. Uh, no problem. We're going to go back to Motherwell first. I think is that right, Jason? Aye. I'll, we'll throw it over to you. You were at the game. Aye. <laughs> I, I can tell by the tone. I can tell by the tone in your voice that it's a, uh, it was brutal. It's a fantastic uh, memory. I thought. I thought to be honest, you Lennon gets a lot of plaudits and he gets things right, but he got the team drastically wrong that night. I don't know whether he was one eye in the cup game on Saturday, which, you know, sense and purposes, that was the most important game that we beat St. Byrne. But uh, I thought the team he played at Mother was wrong on so many levels. Uh, but Benyama at the back, he's our best midfielder, playing him at centre and half. 
Then uh, he brings Ambrose on at half time, uh, or whenever he brings him on, just after half time. That's when you am in the middle of the park. Ambrose makes a rip roar and arse it, and then he changes him back and puts when you back at the back, puts Ambrose in the middle. Uh, I just thought when you're playing a team that sinks the boot in and they're tough in midfield, uh, he plays Rogic along with uh, Rogic and Kai Al in the middle of the park. I thought Kyle was actually not too bad with Commons and Forrest. I thought of Forrest was pretty good, but it's not the kind of midfield you need to pair up against Motherwell. So I just think he got it wrong in so many levels. And what I'm saying to myself now as well is why play Rogner when he's going to leave and he's not signing a new deal? Just put one of the kids in. Put young Marcus Fraser or whoever. I don't know if these guys aren't good enough, but at the end of the day, I just don't see the, the value add in playing Rogner if he's leaving. Uh, I wouldn't give him a chance at the team but uh, obviously Lennon knows more than me but I thought when we get the goal Big Samara scored uh, their goalie made a bit of an arse uh, I thought we would have went on to win the game but we didn't and we deserve to lose mother with a better team to be honest with you uh, one uh, one thing I will say is I was down at the corner near the Motherwell supporters and they were getting the usual bile and uh, all the police have got eyes for as a Celtic support, and particularly looking out for young guys that look as if they're in the Green Brigade. And I just thought Motherwell are getting at the you only sing in the chapel nonsense, which, to be fair, hands up, I, I do sing at chapel and I don't really sing at the games anymore, so they had me bang your eyes, so I couldn't really complain. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I, and I was in the front of where the police room is, uh, Fir Park, and you'd think there was a couple of suicide bombers in the stadium, the way they were frantically pointing here, pointing there. And to be fair, you could have took all the polls out of that stadium and there wouldn't have been any trouble. You know, it's just, it's a joke. Uh, get certs going in and stuff like that, and all flags getting took out, and you say yourself, what's going on here? And so you understand, when you go to the away games, you see the way these laddies are getting treated, it's terrible. You know, and other days watching their team, none of them are up to anything. You know, but uh, ah, there you go. But beat, well beat, and uh, yesterday, well, no, we'll go to yesterday later, but well beat at Motherwell, no complaints. I put, I, I, I was up on Twitter saying I thought Roger was going to score, and then he, he looked a bit lost in the Motherwell game. Like, I like him, but I like him too, but he, 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 he looked lost in the Motherwell game. He's playing next to Kyle, and for us, Kyle's not exactly been playing uh, an awful lot of football. I mean, yeah. and a guy like Roger, you want to put him in next to somebody who's experienced, he's going to keep him. Talking him through the game, possibly, you know, but uh, he, he he just looked kind of a wee bit out of his depth for the first time, you know, since we've seen him play. And I felt bad for him because I wanted him to score because he is a kind of player. He looks like he could be it. And I've heard other sort of pundits, as, as it were, analysts saying that he looks like the real deal, you know. Right. I mean, obviously, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit too soon to say. But uh, Ezekiel didn't really have a great game either against Motherwell. Nah, and. Uh... No, nah, he's, he's good going for it. I thought he was actually coming back to a better form. But, uh, the defence game, I think, really was brilliant, but it's a lot. It's Aye, yeah. and uh, it was a murder on Saturday, I know. But, uh, no, nah, I just wasn't impressed at all. I just I just thought the full shape of the team was wrong. Uh, I think it's more than I Possibly, Joe, aye. Uh, it's just... It's just I think I think he's played well. Forrest has played well the last couple of games. Because that's the thing, he's going to get running at people, he's going to try and get the ball in there from attack. Yep. Well, did he get man of the match against St. Murray? He, uh, he, should have, he should have done if he didn't, but he played well, yeah. played very well. He did get man of the match. Uh, Paul, yourself? Uh, I mean, like what Jason says, you know, when you know what you're going to get when you go to Fur Park, and I think uh, to use the parlance of our time, we played all our fanny merchants in the team, and that's why we lost. And I think it was significant the fact that Samaras, Commons, and Kyle were all dropped on Saturday because I, I do believe that all of them are going to be shipped out by Celtic at the end of the season. I think that's going to be a significant change you'll see because, you know, it's easy to say, it's, younger players like Roger, fair enough, I mean, he was lost at sea, there was no doubt about that, eh? but you do need players to guide them through, and they're just not doing it. I mean, actually, my mate was watching the game, and I watched the game, but I was like, 18 minutes before Sam starts touched the ball on Wednesday. You know? Oh, I know. It's Comments terrible. He's going about every time he's getting touched by somebody, he's screaming at the referees, moaning at people. That's not the attitude to put over. You've got to get your sleeves rolled up, you know what I mean? 
We said it on the show the week before about when Norwell went up to Ross County go be 3-0. He says, hey, you know they're going to be up for it when they come to us, you know what I mean? And they did. And, and as Jason said, they thoroughly deserved a win because they yeah. wanted it there. And I would defy anybody to think that even after we equalised and then Higdon got a winner, did anybody actually think we were going to equalise or get a winner? I certainly didn't. No, no. No, it didn't look like it. Nah. Both goals at the back post as well. You know, mm. sh- shoddy, shoddy stuff. I mean, um, people blame us again for the, the goal, but like, you know, is Nita going to give him a shout? Aye. You know, if, if he's blindsided, somebody's just got to say, hey, watch your back or whatever, you know, but... And they, yeah, but we lost the midfield battle totally, you know, they bossed the midfield. McFadden, they made McFadden look brilliant. Oh, I know, I know. I know, but... Uh, I, I mean, it's like, I was talking about the, 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 on, on Friday, the boy Sean Hutchison, right? Twice he's went in very, very solidly on Celtic players. One of them I thought was a reckless foul. We got away with it. The other one was a really hard tackle. If that's a Celtic team in the 80s, man, Roy Aitken snaps him in two by half time, or Danny yeah. McGrain or somebody. And we just stand there watching this guy bully our players. Mm. It's and Kai, it, Kai Al does the wee shite bag fouls when oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 no, it's no hurting them at all. You know, it's the petulance and stuff like that. Oh, your dad's going to get yourself a booting. <laughs> Right. Am I the only person that's becoming a wee bit sort of disillusioned with Kai Allen now and thinking that he is a, bit, he is a bit of a handbag merchant? Mm. I mean, look, anybody who's been in, lived in working class schemes will tell you that the hard men are not the ones that shout ball and scream and wave their hands up in the air in pubs. They're the ones that say nothing and then they're the first one in when a fight starts. <laughs> you know, yeah. Kai Al is not a hard man. You know, I seen an interview with Roy Keane two weeks ago where a guy asked him at half time if your team isn't playing well, were you shouting and ball at him? He says, no, no, at all. And the guy, so I'm quite surprised at that. He's not all I did. He was looking at him. <laughs> you know, and, and that's that's that, that's a hard man. You know what I mean? Neil Lennon's a hard man. Kyle's not a hard man. And, you know, I think my my take on Kyle was simple. That I think we always have debates with Charlie McGrew. Some people like him, some people didn't. But if you hate Charlie McGrew, didn't want him on the team, the people who love Charlie McGrew will be able to say, well, but he's got great delivery, great set pieces and all that kind of thing. I'd like to know what anybody can say. What does Kyle actually think of the team? Yeah, I mean, there doesn't seem to be any sort of midfield stability when he's in the team. Nah. You know, there, there, there's there's certain elements of the bit of the head as chicken sometimes. Yeah, he chases it out. I chases the ball. Huh? You know, he doesn't I, score goals. No? You know, he doesn't set up goals. He doesn't protect the back four. So what is he doing? But you get the feeling that he still thinks he's a fantastic player. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it might well be. Yeah. You know? But I mean, it's just Jason said. I mean, why are you playing Wanyama at the at the back? If you play Marcus Fraser before you, you know. Christ almighty, you play Willie well, Fraser before that. It's, it's just <laughs> a central midfielder who, like, if you watch like what Jason says, he gets moved to try and save the game for us, right? And somebody says to me at the game, I, I can't even understand if people like to man, you would be going for him. I said, I'll tell you something. See, if he went to Man United or somebody like that, he wouldn't be even getting asked to save the game. He'd be getting asked to give the ball to the players that are saving the game. Yeah. And that's why he would shine so much. You know, and I own the Rockney thing, by the way. Either. Somebody mentioned this to me on Sunday, and I don't know if it's Saturday, big man. I don't know if it's, Do you not think it's. Is it worrying the fact that Napoli's signing a contract? You know, when Yama, Hoopa, Rockney, all had deals put in front of them, and none of them have signed it. Aye, potentially, mate, aye. Somebody's calling him. we got the Snake Plissken calling him. Okay, there we go. Hello, Snake! Oh, sh- snake! Hello! I'll tell you things, you alright? <laughs> I am no bad. How's yourself, guys? Not too bad. We're just talking about the Motherwell game. What did you want to bring up? You were talking about Kai Al there. I, I have to agree. He's no looked anything like it since he got that shocking tackle a year or so ago. It's very sad because I mean I really liked Kai Al when he first came, but he's mm-hmm. just he's not doing it now. And when you look, you compare him with Victor Wanyama. Wanyama's streets ahead of him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it's, it's just sad because when he first came into the team and he had that great run for about three months, we thought this boy's a real deal and no, no so much. Do you think he's changed a wee bit when he first came with like getting the ball and slipping the wee boys through for the winger or the centre forward? Now he's, now he's got a wee ten, he's trying to hide two boys. He should be sitting in a position blocking the fact rather than running and selling himself sort of thing. I think it's a different place when he first came. No way that's in coach thing or more. See as well, Joe. He would, he would get, he would get the odd goal. Mind you, he would do the one two. They would break through into the box. They would be putting the ball away. You know, he'd be like a goal threat as well. But he just doesn't seem to be that type of player anymore. As Joe, as Joe McKenna said there as well, we're not about like a heedless chicken. 
I mean, you imagine you're you're Tom Roger, you're in the team. Suddenly, you've got your midfield partner running a bit like Lucas Chipman. You're right. sitting there as a 21 year old guy who's just got a new job, 26,000 miles from Swiss or whatever, and suddenly this idiot's <laughs> running about the park, and you're standing there with the big, big Keith Lasley and all these mugs kicking you left, right, and centre. You're just going, "What the hell's going on here?" You know, <laughs> not, not you know, in the middle of darkest, deepest Lanarkshire on a Wednesday night. <laughs> There was there was several times there were several times in that game when Roger got the break of the ball in midfield and there was nobody for him to give it to. Like in the midfield. Yeah. He couldn't he couldn't yeah. hand it to Kyle and move on because Kyle wasn't there. You know, so it was it was a bit I don't know, obviously the team selection was wrong, but I mean it was it was a real lackluster performance and it was it was hard to watch. But then again, the Samurai game wasn't exactly easy to watch either the other day. The thing I would say about that is it's, cup, it's a cup game and you're, you've got one objective that's to get in the next round. That's and, exactly you know, it was, um, you know, I'm not really interested in performances in cup games ever. I mean, I was quite worried about this game because I'd seen the BBC Albert coverage of St. Mirren Hertz and St. Mirren absolutely battered here. So I know they're in a bad break of state and, and they were looking really up for it and that was the two or three players that they brought back like in Calvary's Tomston and that. But, you know, we were up for it right away, and you seen that right away. I mean, we Forest was absolutely different class. And I heard people slagging off some of the defence with the Celtic setting goal. The Celtic setting goal was absolutely brilliant. Uh, you know what right. I mean? It's obviously worked out. It's in a good end, comes out, Stokes pulls back, bang, it's in the net. And it was a great response, because I tell you, it's not been often this season that we've been pegged back at one all and then we only win a game. So, you know, at the end of the day, I was just like, I mean, it was, uh, again, t- bringing on to Jason's point about the Memorial game, same thing again, there must have been about 25 police officers in the Celtic game, there were about three in the summer then. Uh, don't know what the hell we were expecting the Celtic game was again, because the other was uh, singing. And, uh, you know, and on the subject of songs, I have to say, even though it was Samaritan fans, I thought it was quite funny that they were singing at the game, What Are You Doing on St. Paddy's Day? No. But, you know, right. in my opinion, there was a few people who weren't happy with the phones, but, you know, we're in the next round, we're in that same final drop, and that's what it's cup football was all about. The one thing I did take from the St. Murray game I thought was very positive, which I've, which I've been glad to see kind of week on week, I, is, uh, is Joe, Joe Ledley's development. He's, he, he seems to just get better and better. I mean, he, it seems, he seems like a can't-drop kind of player now. I mean, I know I've been kind of sort of pumping him up since, since he's saying that's it's taken him a while to get to this stage. Uh, I mean, do you think uh, he'd be in contention for a starting place on Wednesday night? Anybody? I, 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 I would play him. Mm-hmm. Well, they scored two goals in the man of the match, then get draft picked for the Motherwell game. We really did. I mean, I suppose what happened to him. Then he comes back in bad and plays well. This is one of the things well, that bothers me, though, because I mean, he, he does, his work rate is so good. So He works so hard in the pitch. And then he still seems, keeps getting dropped. So, I mean, for him, it must be a bit weird. You know, I mean, he's getting man of the match awards. He's scoring goals. He's, he, he's doing every, everything he can for the team. But he's not getting that regular run. They're saying he was captain, dropped then captain. Aye. Yeah. Yeah. for the Juventus game, and he's in his captain after this. Yeah. Yeah. Back in Goulet, he gives us something in midfield and the other player in the midfield. He's us. And it's like... You know, see if, he, if Joe Edley had played, say, Roderick against Motherwell, he would have seen a different performance with Roderick. Because right. Joe Edley is that guy. He'll do your work. He'll, you know, gauge you, cajole you, and that kind of thing. And I think, I think he would be in my team of the game, to be honest. Absolutely. He, 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 he can also sit in midfield and know the ball mm-hmm. and cut out games. Yeah. Uh, be, be the, be the give-to guy in midfield, he'll pass it. Make mm-hmm. it take square right enough. Or else he can be the one bolting forward, getting in, getting in front of the forwards. So it depends how Lenny uses them. You know what I mean? But he can, he can get two or three different performances. Just between mm-hmm. that and the field, all depends on what Lenny wants to have adapt into the game. Where he can, so he could be useful against Juventus. Are we going to move on to Juventus then? <laughs> <laughs> so Whether we, we, we hang, can we out? Or have we got a chance? Or, as far as I'm concerned, it's a done deal, we're out. But, uh, we're out. We're out. I think we could win the game, but I think we're out. Two, two, maybe have a chance, but... We we I think we've Paul confirmed this here. I never I should I should have, I should have <laughs> got to sort to of be Paul before we come on. But I'll have a punt at this. We've never won in Italy. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I don't I don't think we've ever won in Italy before. We've only scored two goals, I believe, in Italy in our history as well. Is that right? You you did easy, and we scored Vargas scored in the San. Ah, we get beat three one. Yeah, 
Oh, it's actually three because Tommy Gemmell scored in the European Cup. Aye, aye, Sorry. Couldn't want to pull out a big gun there, but I thought I had to. There you uh, go. But no, I mean, listen, we're through. We'll win, we'll win 4 1 on uh, Wednesday, honestly. We'll just <laughs> remember what happened before Barcelona. Snake came on and said, We've no chance. He's come on again, it's perfectly symmetry. And I'll show you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's, you said we were going to have to write the games off, Snake, against Barcelona. I did say that, but what yes, I did thank say, you. I said um, we've only scored two goals in Italy against the Italian team. Aye. Well, here's the thing. It's Rocky Balboa because it's under, <laughs> underdogs. The first the first uh, film for Rocky, he got beat. Second film, came back and won. That's what's going to happen on Wednesday. 4-1, we'll be there. But even uh, even, even, th- even a 3-0 at 90 minutes, you know what I mean? That's not completely out of the, out of the question, is it? Well, think about it. We've never won in Italy. We've only scored <laughs> two goals in Italy. <laughs> and we're going to win three 0 against a team that's romping the Italian league and beat us three 0 at Parquet. That's not out of question. I'm here. I'm here. You can prove us. anything. You can prove anything with facts, Jason. I know. I read it. The question I would ask all you, then, right? Okay, we see this as the fact that if you're the Juventus manager, what, how would you approach this game? Would you go for the, the quick goal and finish it, or would you just try and sit back and? I, I think it'll be that. I think Italian team is normally protected of goal, mm. If they need to come out, they'll come out, but I think they'll sit in the eye. That's what I think we might win the game. You know what I mean? They'll just sit back. They won't try hiding the break, aye, but I think you'll, you'll have most of the ball, I think. Aye, couldn't mm. we? You remember the Ajax game when we pumped him in Amsterdam? We were actually hanging right. over near the end. Aye. You know, when they went 1-0 up, you're saying, well, I don't know, they, they, they had a lot of pressure. And uh, it's a funny thing, and I always the, the year we got to Seville, you know, when we, when it was Bal that we were three one up against, and then went over there and defended and get put out two nil. Aye, it's just I just think your mindset, but I can't see the event. It's there too old in the head. I can't see them at all giving in. Not, but you never know. I would I would be delighted to see if we could win first ever win in Italy. And we could make the game like the scoreline respectable I think, because I think the Lenny will be in Philly to that as well because they'll keep a profile up, do you know what I mean? We can air there, give them a game in Italy, either two see if we beat them. I think the Lenny and that will be delighted to do that. So if there is one, nothing or two, nothing, but I think it will always don't be there and get hammered. I'm not doing I am the same, I definitely. And I think he's got, I think, back to what Joe said at the start, will he play Joe Ledley? He's got to play him. I mean, he's been one of our best players. That's he's, right. I mean, constant... he's one of those guys. I mean, what, 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 what you're looking for on Wednesday is fellas that are going to go out there and just leave it all on the pitch. I think Ledley's mm. de- definitely one of those guys. Like, mm. Yeah. And he'll get you a goal. Yeah. So there, think... There's a bet. Somebody put it on Celtic Mind. My mate Tam put it on Celtic Mind. I didn't see it and I clicked in later, but a few of the boys bet it. The bet on Saturday was uh, Joe Ledley to score in, at any time in Celtic to win. And Wally Hills, it was 61 on Saturday. And quite a few of the guys had bet it. Aye, it was just like a, a, a special. They don't enjoy the Edley to score at any time in Celtic to win. And uh, aye, 61. So a few of the boys had 10 and 20 quids on it and stuff like that. And what well, a bet. It's all right, half a bet. But he's always the kind of guy who'll pop in. And how many times has he arrived in the box when there's a cross ball in and it's just Ledley that's nodded at home? Or he's mm. slid in and stuck it in his knee or his foot. You know, I just think yeah. he's, he's reading the game's excellent and he's always in the right. right. He's not like a Kai Alley, doesn't he chase the ball? He sort of knows where the button. Uh, Neil, Len- Neil Lennon had that in abundance. He'd the ESP that he knew where the ball was going to be. Uh, 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 and do you know the funny thing about Joe Ledley? I, and I, I was thinking about this earlier on the day. He always seems to hit form at this time of year for goals. Even in his first season, he scored the two at Inverness up in there in March, which put us through the same thing. And then he and then he scored in the cup final against the Huns when we got beat two one. And it's for some reason he's always at his peaks at around this time, you know. But I mean, it's funny you say about. Um, leave it all on the pitch, Joe, because that's why that's one reason I hope Charlie Mongu isn't playing on Wednesday because I don't think he does that kind of joke that you, you, when you leave it on the pitch. I think he's made of kind of like he's not this type Joe Ledley type or a Scott Brown type or that will just be shut and doing all the time in the kind of games, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, and I would like to see us play guys who are just going to go out there and absolutely bust their gut for it, you know, completely bust their gut for it because you never know what could happen. Someone just mentioned oh. in the chat room here, Tom Doherty in the chat room saying, our defence is a train wreck just now. And our, like, We're talking about Juventus maybe sitting in and defending, but I mean, we also got to look at our own defence. Like, I mean, Ezra Ez- Geary against Samaran was, uh, I mean, that, that like, obviously at fault for the goal because he's, he's, clearly, he's, clearly, he's, clearly, he's, he's clearly blind in both eyes. He could never do that again. He, his first header has come off. 